Hello, all you wonderful people out there, and welcome to my media museum. Today, we're starting box nine of our 45 RPM vinyl records collection. Uh, these are still a variety. They're mixed up. Uh, we haven't gotten to the main collection yet, but it's not going to be long, and we will get to the A to Z's. Um, but anyways, we're starting off here uh, asking you to come aboard the Sausalito Summer Nice. Do, do, do. This is a great song, really great song by a band that, uh, you know, slipped by me back in the day, Diesel. Uh, they, they were really, really talented from these two songs that I've heard because I looked this up online because uh, I was so impressed with the B-side song here, uh, Bite Back which was even more jammed up than Sausalito Summer Nights, which was kind of poppy, but had a really awesome riff. I mean, a really great riff. Dun, 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 dun. Um, anyways, um, this is really not cheap to try and pick this up. It's a couple hundred bucks to get that album, Watts in a Tank, on CD off of eBay. So, yeah, I probably will only be hearing those two songs for the foreseeable future, because I'm not paying that. <laughs> Uh, that's crazy in my opinion. But anyways, moving on. Uh, taking care of business. Bachman Turner Overdrive. And a uh, short little story about this one. Uh, Elvis had TCOB stenciled on a lot of his stage equipment. And it stood for taking care of business. He was actually a pretty big fan, at least of that song, if not a BTO in general. And I do remember hearing a story about Randy Bachman meeting Elvis and them discussing that, how much he liked taking care of business and kind of adopted it as a uh, slogan of his but uh, the b-side of this one you ain't seen nothing yet because this is a celebrity series it's a double a side it's a reissue um you know it's, they're they're both off of um i don't know that one's off of uh, overdrive 2 taking care of business was from bachman overdrive 2 and you ain't seen nothing yet uh came off and not fragile as it's noted there on the labels but I'm a huge BTO fan, actually. I've got all their albums and uh, listened to them quite a bit. Next up, we've got the Scorpions, another great band that I really appreciated a lot. And Rock You Like a Hurricane, which is a really, really good jammed up song for them. And, you know, going all the way back to, like, Robot Man, and uh, I liked uh, their early albums. I liked their later stuff, even the more commercial stuff that they got into, which is right around the, this time of this one. Uh, the B-side of this being a little more coming home, a um, little more the, on the commercial side of what I'm talking about. But uh, I really, really enjoyed the Scorpions' um, career. They, they did great work. Uh, here's a nice little uh, different Electra sleeve for a band called Faster Pussycat, who uh, had a really great song called Slip of the Tongue. Now, this is the B-side. It's noted as the B-side. I understand that, but I'm showing the B-side first because I think Slip of the Tongue was the best song on the whole album. I love that song, and um, don't understand why it wasn't the A-side, to tell you the truth. But what was the A-side? House of Pain, which was also a really good song. Uh, it's just that that uh, slip of the tongue had such a great riff, you know, such a, uh, that it, it really stuck with me, and I really uh, like it a lot more. But House of Pain's a good song. Fast Fist Cat had a couple of really good albums. Uh, I actually have two copies of that one back to back in this box, and I just want to show this because it's got a different sleeve. Uh, no telling if it came in this sleeve or that other sleeve, which one they originally came in. But uh, this one's clearly the correct sleeve. It's a Geffen Records. And somebody wrote it, the info, <laughs> on it here. But uh, it's Tesla's Love Song. And this is another one that uh, I'm a much bigger fan of the B-side than the A-side here. The A-side being Love Song, which did well for them, was a big hit for them. But the B-side was a non-album track for them. And it was called I Ain't Superstitious, the old Willie Dixon standard. Now, I don't know how big a hit it was for Willie really Dixon, but I do remember Jeff Beck making it rather popular in the 70s. And if you've never heard Megadeth's version of this, definitely pull that up and give it a listen, because Megadeth really rocked this song up, well, which they do. Uh, all the cover songs I've ever heard from Megadeth were, you know, really, really great versions. Uh, they, they don't murder songs. They, they improve on them, if anything. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of really good cover songs from Megadeth. But anyways, um, Power Station here with Get It On. Um, they were a super group. 
that uh, come out sometime in the 80s. I can't remember who the members were or who was exactly singing for them, but I do remember that they were a uh, super group um, formed out of, uh, you know, famous or well-known um, members of other bands. And I'm not sure how long they stuck together or if they even had a second album or not, but I do remember when this album came out and it was uh, very popular. It did very well for them. B side of this being a song called Go to Zero. So there you have it. Next up, we've got Uncle Ted. Yeah, nice to have a good Ted Nugent 45. Uh, Cat Scratch Fever, the live version off of Double Live Gonzo. And I do believe in the A to Z boxes, I've got the studio version of Cat Scratch Fever. I know I've got some other Ted's. Um, but it's nice to have the live version here. And on the B side, we've got another live version off of Double Live Gonzo of Yank Me, Crank Me. So, Ted, what, what can I say about Ted? Gotta love Ted. Yeah, he's got a mouth on him, and a lot of people don't like him because he's too outspoken. And I can't really necessarily argue with that, but I do like Ted. And uh, 1997 here, George Thurgood brought us Rocking My Life Away. And you'll notice here it's marked for jukeboxes only, so that's interesting. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of George Thurgood 45, so it's nice to have one. Rocking My Life Away was a pretty darn good album. Um, most of the uh, songs on it, I believe, were cover tunes, which really wasn't uncommon for George. George is a much better um, um, performer and re-envisioner than he is a songwriter. Even though he's written some really, really great songs, he tends to do a lot of covers. And, you know, that's fine. I like George. I like him personally as a person. I think he's a great individual and very talented at what he does. And um, I just wish he'd change his playlist up a bit, because if you go see him in concert, he plays the same songs in the same order just about every show. And that gets a little stale, you know. But uh, love George. Glad to have another 45 of his to add to my collection. Next up, we've got another artist that I uh, have a strong appreciation for, and that's Joe Walsh, doing All Night Long from the Urban Cowboy soundtrack, uh, which this is kind of funny because I um, just recently, like within the last month or so, bought the Urban Cowboy at an estate sale for a dollar on DVD, uh, simply because I do like John Travolta, and I've never seen it. Um, probably because, you know, I'm not really into country music and I got a bit of an attitude against, um, the stuff. So I just kind of avoided that film all these years, but I figured I, I needed to, uh, sit down and, and watch it for a dollar. Why not? Uh, B side of this, since it is a motion picture soundtrack 45, <coughs> excuse me, it's not uncommon at all that we've got a uh, song by a different artist and it's Gilly's Urban Cowboy Band doing Orange Blossom Special Hoedown. So, <laughs> there's a mouthful. But uh, nice to have that All Night Long by Joe Walsh on the A side. I'll probably never listen to that B side. It's <laughs> not something that's gonna interest me. And then here we've got April Wine doing Enough Is Enough, which is off the Power Play album, which was uh, one of the last really decent albums they did. I loved April Wine. <clears throat> they did a... Uh, whole lot of really good albums but they started out in canada and did quite a few albums there before coming to the states a lot of people think that harder faster or maybe even first glance were this, their first albums here in the states but not in canada they had uh, four or five albums in canada before they uh, hit it big in the states and i i have um a box set of those as well and i like all of the april wine stuff they did good music but definitely harder faster nature of the beast those were the pinnacle for sure, of their output. Uh, B-side of this, another song off Power Play called Ain't Got Your Love. All right. And then um, next up here, I'm going to show you the receipt. We've got uh, October 2018 at Sergeant Pepper's Music Store in Estes Park, Colorado. I paid $3 for this. And uh, that's uncommon for me. I don't tend to pay more than a buck or two for most 45s. But... I didn't recall ever having seen a Savoy Brown 45 before. And uh, it's got songs off of two different albums, too. I'm Tired Here uh, is from A Step Further. And the B-side, Stay With Me Baby, was from Getting to the Point. And I like Savoy Brown. They're kind of a bluesy 
rock band from the 70s and uh, I just wanted to have a Savory Brown 45 in my collection so I bit the bullet and I paid three dollars for him oh there's a few I, mean, I might have even paid four or five dollars for a couple of rare rarities but they're definitely in the A to Z collections and something that I got early on I haven't paid that much for one in a long time uh, that's probably the most I've paid in the, in the last five years is three bucks so anyways moving on again we got the cars doing touch and go off of uh, Panorama, which I like the first two albums a lot better than Panorama, but the fourth one, you know, came back strong, so they kept my interest going. I stayed with them. Sometimes one really bad album can make you lose interest in a band, or you just um, get off on other things and you don't uh, follow them after that. But the Cars, uh, I, they moved on from Panorama, and so did I with them. So. B side of that one being Down Boys, which is another song off of Panorama. And Panorama is not a horrible album. Going back, actually, it's not bad at all now. But when it came out, um, it didn't um, set well with me and my friends. We all were kind of like, hmm. All right now, here we've got The Who doing Summertime Blues. And we've already shown you the Eddie Cochran original version of this. And I've shown you the Blue Cheers remake of it that was immensely popular and did extremely well in the, in the late 60s. But here we've got The Who doing the same song, Summertime Blues. It's a great song, and they do a really good version of it. And the B-side of this is a John Entwistle um, composition, Heaven and Hell. So there you go. It's a really good 45 to get your hands on, and I'm definitely happy to have it in my collection. So I hope you come back for part two. We'll see you then.